Hello friends, this video on Periodic Classification of Elements Part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched Part 1 to Part 3. Then this guy came, new land, and he gave a new land laws of active. What he did was he arranged this elements based on the atomic mass. He was not bothered about the chemical property. He was not even bothered about the chemical property. Right? He just arranged based on the atomic mass. For example, hydrogen, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, all these are arranged in the increasing order of atomic mass. He observed that and he started with the hydrogen and ended with the uh, thorium, I think that was the 56th element that time. And he observed that every eighth element is similar to the first. For example, hydrogen, fluorine, fluorine, it was his observation. They had similar property. Lithium, sodium, potassium has similar property. Magnesium, calcium, they have similar property. That's what he observed, right? That was, he observed that they have similar property. So with this, you can see that he found a new thing called periodicity. You can see that, right? Because till now, uh, if we have seen that Daubernier, he just found the relation between the atomic mass and the property. This guy found a periodicity of property of the element, right? Correct. And these law he called as Newton's law of octave because after every eight it, it, it repeats and it is almost similar to the tune we have sa re gamma pa da ni sa right sa re gamma pa da ni gain sa so the, it, it's similar to the tune we have the rag in the Hindi music and if you see one achievement of this was with this if you see lithium and sodium right the property is same. Similarly, beryllium and magnesium property is same, right? So he 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 did all this thing, right? He he arranged this uh, uh, all the elements in the order of increasing atomic mass, and then he found that they they follow this uh, periodicity, but it had limitations. For example, these are bucket in one is also bucket in one. So there are some limitations which we'll study in the next slides. So the limitation of this uh, new land new land's law of octave is like. This guy is applicable only to calcium. So after calcium, whatever the new elements uh, found, they did not fit in his uh, table. Right? Only little calcium, this was fine. After calcium, the, the, the repetition of property was not perfect. It was not uh, perfect. And it was assumed that only 56 elements existed. So please note. He assumed that only 56 elements existed because at that time only 56 elements were there. But later on, new new elements came, right? Chemists discovered a lot of new elements. So, and the new elements never uh, got a space in his uh, table. Also, he adjusted uh, two elements in one group. Example, cobalt and nickel. This guy is part of one group, right? One group. So. This is something which you should not do, right? You are ordering, you are putting in a group, you should have only one element, right? So, they are putting, this guy put two elements together in a group. So, that was something uh, was questionable by a lot of people. And then also, if you see this iron, iron, it resembles property of cobalt and nickel, if you see, right? But they are so far. Correct? Also, if you see, Cobalt and nickel and chlorine, they don't have any con property, right? Chlorine, chlorine, cobalt, they are different actually. Cobalt and nickel are metal and chlorine is a non-metal. They are totally different things. But if you see, they are put together. So, uh, the placement was not perfect. It had issues. Uh, the issues were, uh, if you see the, the iron and the cobalt and nickel, they are very far, but they have similar property. If you see chlorine and cobalt and nickel, they were... Uh, together but they don't have common property right and also cobalt and nickel they has, he has put them together that is also questionable so it had a lot of limitation but again it showed uh, one thing that is periodic periodicity of elements property does exist maybe the way he found was incorrect but there is something that can be explored right and then uh, we had a new guy that came but before that let's go for some questions the first question is, did Daubernier trade also exist in Newland's law of active? So let's see this. This is my uh, Daubernier trades. 
the blue one and my new Lorentz law of active in the green one. Let's see. Lithium, sodium, potassium. Is it there? Yes, lithium, sodium, potassium is there. That means this guy exists. Right? CA, SR, BA is there. Uh, calcium, SR, BA is not there. So this guy doesn't exist. Cl, Br, I, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Chlorine is there, bromine is there, iodine is not here. Right? So that means this guy also doesn't exist. So we see only one triad or only one dominant triad is part of Newland's law of act. Right? So only one dominant triad is part of Newland's vector. So the question says, what are the limitations of Daubenier classification? As we know that that time there were 33 elements known, but not all the elements could be classified in uh, the Daubenier's uh, triad. Only three triad with three elements each. That means you can say that nine elements were part of his classification. Other elements were not part of his classification. That was the limitation of the Daubenier classification. The next question says, what are the limitations of Newton's law of octave? So there are no limitations. The first thing, as I told was, only up to calcium he can accommodate, right? Uh, that follows the periodicity. After that, there are issues with that. Till calcium thinks they're fine, but after this, uh, it is not following the pattern actually. And the second thing was uh, the new elements which came, right? The new elements which were discovered after that, they were not uh, accommodated. That was one issue, right? And this guy, if you see, right, cobalt and nickel, they were together. That was wrong, right? And if you see, the iron is far away from this guy. Cobalt and nickel is again wrong. And chlorine and cobalt and nickel are in the same group. That's again wrong because they don't share the same property. So that's the limitation of the new length law. A, B, C are the elements of Daubenier triad. Atomic mass of A is uh, 7. B is, uh, we don't know. And C is 39. We have to find the atomic mass of B. So this guy told that atomic mass of B has to be the mean of these two. So that will become 7 plus 39 divided by 2. And that will come out to be 23. And that's my answer. Easy. So. This guy told, right? So you you have this uh, three elements with the similar property, and you create, create a triad out of that. So the atomic mass of first and the atomic mass of last, you take the mean, you get the atomic mass of the middle one. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.